Fakes. Fakes is a new framework for isolating code to test by replacing parts of the application with shims and stubs that executes in place of the original code. The parts of the application you want to test do not even have to be implemented yet or can be incomplete and not working. There are two types of fakes, stubs and shims. Stub is the possibility to replace classes with a small substitution that implements the same interface as the replaced class. Stubs are mainly used within your own solution where you have access to the code that can be decoupled using interfaces. Shim is used to intercept the compiled code and inject and run a substitution code. Shims are used mainly for reference assemblies to which you don't have code access. It could for instance be used to substitute system code with your own code. Note: A solution with tests containing fakes can still be shared with team members who don't have a Visual Studio edition supporting fakes. They will not be able to execute the tests, however. You can use fakes with any .NET version that is compatible with Visual Studio 2012. You can go as far back as to .NET 2.0. Faking system classes. You should avoid faking system classes because it can cause unpredictable behavior. Most of the system classes cannot be faked by default. If you are determined to fake system classes, you must do it manually by altering the fakes configuration file by using the namespace attribute with an add tag. Stubs. When using stubs, we are focusing on testing code within our business tier components. Not the database, WCF REST services, the browser, etc. Stubs make it possible to test code isolated from its dependencies. When using stubs, the code must be designed in a specific way, allowing for separation and decoupling of dependencies through interfaces. Note: Stubs are used to verify state of the system under test, whereas the similar mocks are used to verify behavior of the results of the system under test. Stubs make it easier to make sure that specific state conditions are met from isolated dependencies. Writing the unit test before changing the code in the actual component is a good way to first recreate the state of the isolated component. The developer can then use a red-green implementation strategy to solve the defect and not leave it up to the testers. Because we isolate the system under test, the unit, we can perform the test without external dependencies. This in turn minimizes the code impacted by the test as well as the amount of code needed to set up the test. It's important to keep in mind that we are not interested to test the physical state of the example data source. It is therefore important to decouple transient conditions and physical state. By using stubs, we are able to create better quality components. Mind you that just by using stubs, it's not implied that you automatically will write better components, but it certainly gives you a better chance of doing so. Stubs are injected into the code under test by using interfaces. In this way, the real call to the production code can be diverted to your stub code. Important. Microsoft Fakes does not provide behavior verification, as in nmock and rhino mocks. Shims. Shims are a way to be able to unit test code that otherwise would not be able to be tested in isolation. When using shims compared with stubs, the code does not need to be written in a certain way. 
The code does not need to be injected through interfaces like stubs, but intercepts the calls to the production code and diverts it to the shim code. Cases when you might want to use shims are when dependencies cannot be replaced. The code relies on sealed classes, maybe of third-party frameworks, or calls are made to static methods. Shims provide a way to replace dependencies at runtime, detouring calls to specific code predefined with the desired test values to be used by the system under test. Note, shims provide a way to replace dependencies at runtime, not at design time as with stubs. Shim context. When using a shim, a shim context is needed to scope the usage of the shim. You have to do this in order for the solution to build. This is a safety measure to make sure that the shim is used only when needed. You should never put a shim context in an initialization method, because you never know what will happen between two method calls. A shim property is made up of two methods, a getter and a setter. Choosing between stubs and shims. To recap, we use stubs to intercept calls made through interfaces designed with testability in mind, usually written and accessible in our solution. And we use shims for external assemblies and legacy code where we don't have access to the code and a detour is needed. Note, stubs are generally much faster than shims.